Coming up on today's show, I'm headed back to school. That's right, all hour long we're touring Lorain County JVS, and let me tell you, there's plenty to learn along the way. New Day Cleveland starts right now. Welcome to New Day Cleveland, I'm David Moss. All hour long, we're exploring the impact of Lorain County JVS, and let me tell you, that impact is big. From interns at NASA to graduates in the workforce and opportunities for adults and high schoolers alike, the possibilities are endless. These students are getting a leg up in the real world thanks to what they're learning right here. To kick things off, let's hear from the man in charge. Lorain County Joint Vocational School District is a career technical school district, uh, 9 through 12. The ultimate goal was back in 1971 was vocational education. That term has now been changed to career technical education as the trades have become more uh, intense, more technically challenged, and more diverse. And here we serve over 1,500 students, some are in our satellites, to include our adult education program. Some of the different programs and opportunities that we have here range anywhere from our ninth and 10th grade exploration program. That's when the young learners come and they get to experience certain career technical uh, fields and ultimately make a decision of which area they like to attend. Most of our programs in terms of what we call seat hours or clock time actually begins as 11th grader. Here at our institution, we're unique because we also have our content core areas, which is our language, arts, sciences, et cetera. So it feels and acts much like a traditional comprehensive high school. On our adult side, we have programs that are somewhat limited based on enrollment, but we do and, and are able to do customized training for different organizations throughout the county. In my experience uh, from working in comprehensive school districts to well as in career technical school districts, there's no, no better pedagogical way for young people and adults to learn. Here in career technical education, not only do our students have to read, write, and comprehend, they have to build it. And then as they build, they have to go through some troubleshooting. Sometimes it doesn't work out exactly to plan, so they have to think. So they have to use what we call a term in education, scaffold. They have to take previous information and use it to critically solve the current situation. And that's the best tool of learning for retention and also for skill sets. Some of the unique opportunities with our business partners are internship and externships. Most of our students will go out and work for companies throughout, uh, be it Mercy Hospital, uh, some of the hair salons, some of our machine and manufacturing uh, companies that's throughout the county. In career technical fields, we must adjust and change as the world changes around us. Programming has become more robust. We have changed our curriculum in some areas and added and took some things away to make it more inclusive for all. We're on the right track and we will continue to fine tune as things grow. Those students cross that stage and, and we know that we gave them the best that we can give them. So now they equip, as I often say, we gave them the tools and I often challenge them to use those tools because they have tools unlike most of us who went and graduated from comprehensive schools. We left with a high school diploma, yes, and we left with some information, but most of us didn't know how to build or construct or troubleshoot something and that's what these young people are able to do. If you want to be challenged, you want to be pushed above and beyond what you currently know, if you want to obtain a skill set that most won't have around you, this is where you want to come.
Lorain County JVS has so much to offer its students, and they even taught me a thing or two. How about that? So I went back to school for a day, and let me tell you, it was fun. Okay, I am with the guy that I've been wanting to meet my whole life, Bill, the teacher of electrics. Is that what you are? Uh, yeah, electrical instructor. Okay, so I just love that idea because I try to do this at home, and every time I do it at home, there's either soot, flying, or sparks. Don't know how. Yeah, you just gotta, you guys pay attention to what you're doing, and uh, keeps cast the power away from the ground, you'll be all right. Power away from the ground, okay, so let's do that. What's the ground, and what's the power, and nice. how do you so your do bare this? ones, that's gonna be your ground wire. So that's what's protecting everything from electrical shock and you getting hurt. How does it do that? So power is insulated. So it's coming in and then it goes back on the neutral on the return path. Okay, so then the ground is protecting the boxes and the devices. So if power hits that, it trips the breaker instead of lighting you up. Now do you understand why you have to go to school to learn this? Because you said all that and I could repeat it in a thousand years, but you can show me. So what we're, we're gonna we're gonna light make this so a light comes on. We're gonna make this so a light comes on. We're gonna do a switch and a light. How do we do it? This is one of those classes like everybody should take, but if you took this class, you can put yourself into a great career, couldn't you? Yes. Yep, it's, uh, it's definitely, there's lots of jobs out there. And uh, I mean, even if you took this class just for yourself, for your home, it'd be amazing. When the kids come out of this class, where does that put them in the world of like apprenticeships and that sort of thing? So typically they come in junior year and we run through the tooling and safety and all the basics. And then they junior year, between junior and senior year, they go on a uh, summer internship. So I find them jobs with local community employers. They go out work all summer. Those are good jobs. They are. They get paid, they get high school credit, and they get on the job experience. This is like being a doctor of electricity. So this is just one of the things they learn how to do. Like they learn how to put the whole panel together. Yeah, panel. so we come in, we start with uh, safety and tooling, and then we move into these board projects, we call them. So they will have 25 different projects to do on these boards. Mm -hmm. Learn how to wire switches and plugs and receptacles and GFIs and all <laughs> now, that good stuff. Now when I stick it in like that, sparks come out. Okay, so this is where the light goes. Yep, so we're gonna finish the switch. So then we're gonna snap our plaster ring on for our light fixture. You call it a plaster ring? Yeah, a plaster ring. So it's like a drywall ring, plaster mm -hmm. ring. So we'll tighten that guy down. Does it work? Yeah, go ahead. Hit the switch. How about that? There we go. Not bad. Still to come, greenhouses and agriculture. You'll learn something new after this. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm Bailey. We're students at the Lorraine County JVS and we're going to be giving you tips on how to make the perfect chocolate chip cookie. We use salted butter instead of unsalted butter in our recipe to increase the depth of the flavor. In our recipe we use extra flour to give the cookies a lighter and fluffier texture. And, and that's, that's our, our tip, tip for you. you. Lorain County JVS, and I think I've heard about cars being fixed here and trucks and welding. I never thought about agriculture. Is this agriculture or is this plants or what do you call this department? Um, we are actually landscape and greenhouse management, but I think of us as a whole overarching thing of horticulture and agriculture. Um, agriculture is one of the biggest in Ohio. It's one of the biggest people that, that employed. Okay. So. so Beth, I heard you had bugs. We do. We have good bugs though. What are we going to do with them? So what we're going to plan is, is we're going to release ladybugs to prevent any aphids or white flies in the greenhouse. We like to try to um, use organic methods whenever possible. So, so we're not teaching the kids how to use just chemicals. We're trying to get around chemicals, chemicals that are harmful. Correct. Or, or do it the right way. Yes, yes. So these ladybugs, what they'll basically do is they basically go eat any of the undesirable bugs. So where are the ladies? So they're right here in these little pouches. Ooh, so we're each going to take them. Look at that. So 
You didn't get this at Convenient Food Mart. Where did you get these? Um, actually from Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. So people can actually go online yes. and do this in their own gardens. Correct, correct. You just got a class from Beth for free. <laughs> I love it. So okay. what we're going to do is we are going to... I don't want to cut it. I don't want cutting the ladies in half. Yep, yep. That's why we try to make the little girls go down. And we're just going to cut okay, it right girls. here. All the way? Yep, all the way across. And then we are going to take them. I feel like a beautician with the girls. <laughs> and then we are just going to sprinkle them out. And then they're going to go out. We wet down the stuff ahead of time, the plants. Oh. Because they're thirsty from their journey. Oh, that, OK. So I, I'll go out here a little bit since you were yep. there, right? Yep, exactly. So how far will these, these bags go? Like, I mean, how we don't want to waste them in one spot, or the, it doesn't matter because they'll fly around? It doesn't matter because they'll fly around. Technically, two bags will cover my greenhouse. My greenhouse is a 40 by 60 Let me get a little for you greenhouse. there. Are you ready? A little air, huh? Look, 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 look. <laughs> I'd probably be a problem student acting like this. Right? <laughs> no, this is exactly, and the, the kids love doing it because they love to see that the ladybugs so, are a great way so to I do it. So I got a bunch left over, huh? Yep, we can just put it over here. We're going to put it over here by our petunias maybe and just let them chill out. Okay. Or you can, you can drop just, them just either way. Out. Yep. Okay, so I see proven winners written on some of these, and uh, I see provided by landscape and greenhouse management, Lorraine County JVS. Correct. So can people buy these then? Yes, yes. We have spring sales and we have um, sales around the holidays. What kind of plants are these? <laughs> Those are our goldfish. Um, what our goldfish do is they will actually eat and swim in there and then obviously they release their leftovers into this bed right here and they grow the lettuce. And then the, How many kinds of lettuce, lettuce do you have? Um, there's currently three different types of lettuce in there. You know, they teaches them how to grow things in a different form. There is no soil in there. It's mm. all clay and okay. water. Lorraine County JVS is a four-year high school, right? Correct. So if you're interested in this, how much of your time is spent here if you're a student and you're really interested in this? Um, what happens is we do different things. Their first year in my class is they learn the different things as in they learn plant basics, they learn how to grow things, they learn how to um, take care of items as well as like equipment safety and basics on this. They learn how to like grow the plants from seeds to start that. Great. So then what we do their next year is they get more involved. So like if they really love this, they will take care of this completely. It's such a peaceful, calm class. <laughs> I can't get the students to get rowdy. They're all, they're all, too, they're all too calm and happy. They, they all love doing what they're doing, so that's why they're here. I love what you're doing. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for coming. Jason, this looks like a good class, but what is it? So this is the Sport Health and Fitness Tech class. We call it SHIFT. It's a two-year program for juniors and seniors that want to go into sports medicine, exercise science, and the therapy careers, like occupational therapy, physical therapy. Those okay, yeah. Every time I drive by a hospital now, they're adding on a new building to the hospital, and it says sports medicine. Mm -hmm. I never know quite what that is. Is that just for injured people, or is this for get people to rehabilitate, or what? Well, it's a little, little bit of little bit of both. Okay, so you know, after athletes get hurt, you know, they need to be rehabbed, or if they have to have surgery, they have to rehab after. So they're going to go to these sports medicine facilities, and you know, they may also do some preventative measures as well to pre you know prevent injuries from happening mm -hmm. during the season. I see a lot of exercise equipment, like big balls and all kinds of stuff, little weights and that sort of thing. So is this about? just learning how to do the exercises or do they actually learn about how the human body is put together and how it works? They work on both. Anatomy is part of, of the course, so they will learn about, you know, the full anatomy and physiology, you know, the parts of the body and how it works. And then they will learn about the exercises and the rehab and, you know, which exercise is important for which body part and why you would use those exercises and how to monitor somebody that's doing those exercises to get them done safely. Yeah, because I, get, I imagine once you start to rehabilitate somebody, help them get better, you have to know what they were before they got broken. Absolutely. It's important for you know therapists and uh, athletic trainers to kind of have a little bit of knowledge of what the patient you know was like beforehand because mm. you know the goal is to get them back to 100 percent. So I see a white table in the middle of the room. Is that like for the buffet or what is it? Yeah, yeah, there's a little buffet. <laughs> that is an anatomage table. Um, it's basically like a uh, like a big iPad. Okay, and there's pictures of cadavers in there, like 3D images of real cadavers. 
and you can manipulate the pictures and you can like take different body systems out and put them back in and do dissections. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a good way for the students to kind of learn mm -hmm. some of the anatomy. Hey, so what's the difference, like, for you as a teacher, Jason, like, you have somebody, you show them an exercise to get better, and you watch them do the exercise. What's the difference between discovering what that exercise needs to be? I mean, is, is there a medical element in here, too, like, where, you, where they read, like, a doctor's report, maybe, yeah. and then react to that? Yeah, so you know, most of the time if somebody um, has gone through surgery, there will be a protocol from that surgeon that mm -hmm. is going to let the therapist or the trainer know what exercises are appropriate in that time frame of, of the healing process. So if somebody's had a, like a slight knee operation, they have to know how hard they can drive that person too. Absolutely, yeah, because I mean, you, you wanna get the person back as quick as you can, but you have to do it safely. Mm -hmm. so. What would be the biggest surprise to folks that come in here and they think they understand this and they learn something about it? What, what would be the biggest surprise? Probably, you know, how, how detailed it all is, you know, how, how much is involved in, in terms of having to know the anatomy. You have to know about nutrition, about sports psychology. I mean, uh, it's, really covers a lot yeah. of ground. For somebody who wants to get into the medical field, like I know this, any school, any four-year school here in Lorain County can come here. If you wanted to be a doctor or a surgeon or something like that, could you have an opportunity to come to this class and learn a little bit more? Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, anything that we're going to learn in here is going to be important for, you know, the medical field. Like I said, you know, anatomy, having a new nutrition, health and wellness, you know, injury evaluation prevention. And I have had, you know, past students that have gone on into the medical field. I, I have an orthopedic surgeon, you know, former mm -hmm. student. I have a former student that's a physician assistant. So, yes, definitely this is a, a good program to prepare for and what's that. the name of the program in the class? Sport Health and Fitness Tech, otherwise known as SHIFT. Run by Jason. Thank you very much. When we come back, a lesson in cooking, practicing career readiness with the students at Lorain County JVS. Hi, I'm Nathan Sword, a student of the Lorain County JVS, and this is my tech tip. My tech tip is on draining the gas out of your lawnmowers uh, before you put them up for storage to prevent the carburetor getting all gunked up, because uh, then it won't run right. So the first thing you got to do is a line right here coming from the fuel tank. You pull that off. Fuel will come out of that. That's perfectly normal. If you want, you can use something like vice grips and. Uh, Clamp it off to prevent leakage, at least a lot of it. Wipe that off, and then on the bottom of this bowl, there is, and it's gonna depend on what mower you have. This one is a 10 millimeter bolt, and you take a wrench or a socket, and you pop that off. There's gonna be some more gas leaking. And then drop this bowl, Make sure there's no fuel in it. Then you can put it back on. And if you really want to get fancy with it, you can spray some carb cleaner in it, take the carb off, but you don't have to. There's no necessity to do that unless you really want it to be clean. That's my tech tip. We are a ninth grade class, so the students you see behind me are all ninth graders. So probably this is the first time they're trying to like prepare some kind of food versus just eating it. Well, they will eat it oh, okay. eventually, yes. Okay. yes. And so Matthias, you're going to walk me through what we're going to make. It looks like an omelet to me. Absolutely. So we're going to make an omelet. It's a great introductory thing for kids to learn. Was it Shayla's idea that you show us? 100%. Okay, was, let's yep. do it. We always say low, low heat low and slow. You don't want to burn anything. See, so you see what happened there. 
Shayla, just, I turned it up a little. Shayla I turned, turned it, it down. down a little bit. I have learned a lesson <laughs> yeah. already, right? Oh, Shayla's yeah. in charge. That's, yeah. that's the lesson yep. you learned. Yes. Kids look like they're doing great. Yeah, they're this, doing This they're is doing the ninth great. grade class? This is the ninth grade class. We actually have ninth, tenth, and eleventh, and twelfth graders here at the JVS. Mm -hmm. So as ninth graders, they have one lab teacher that they spend three periods with and they learned introductory employment skills. So in here, obviously they're doing culinary. They will also do baking and pastry, cosmetology, early childhood. We're just one of five different areas for freshmen. So, so we have building is, trades. Why is his so hot and mine's not? You because he mine. needs to turn his down, that's why. I, have, I, I yes, use bacon in mine. Why. I have bacon yeah. grease yeah. on mine, so. You rascal, yeah. you. Bacon's rolling. Yeah, he does have bacon in his, so that's why. I can turn yours up a little bit if you want it oh, to get it going. You. I'm going to put a little more fat I think, in here. I think you should. Yeah. I'll put a little more fat in here, Are right? you sure that's all the bacon you want? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to look around here and see. Is this a bacon crowd? The you guys bacon. like bacon? Yeah. There we go. A little bit of a stir first, so you get it all get it kind of mixed in. There's lots of ways to make an omelet, but this is my favorite. There's more than one way to crack an egg, right? Right. That's why it gets cracked. Yeah, make it pretty for the people. So. so you see ninth graders in here. Well, we also have 10th graders here in the building, and those 10th graders, they actually get to be out in our junior and senior labs. So some of the labs that you're visiting today, our 10th graders actually get to place, they're placed in those labs for five to six weeks. Uh -huh. So what that does is that it gives them the opportunity to experience that lab, and it tells them if they like it, if they want to go into it, and it helps them make a better decision going into their junior year. We have found a lot of, there's it's very successful program. I love this program. It's so cool, right? Yeah, it's so yeah. cool. Yeah, and this is just one part of it. There's, there's 10 teachers that teach ninth and 10th grade lab, and we have a building trades program, we have a business side for ninth and 10th grade, we have uh, Allied Health. You should work here, you know everything I, there is. I should, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. why they picked me. This is great. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here to help. Thank you. Yeah. So you've done a nice job. We're gonna make sure we get it all the way down here in the front of the pan. Okay, here right? we go. And we teach the kids how to flip an isometer. So we're here. This is really a good thing to learn. There you go. That. How do we do it? Right in half. So we're gonna oh, in half? Yeah, you wanna try it? Are yeah. you right-handed or left-handed? Oh, uh, I'm both. Very nice. How are you doing? Oh, okay. And there you go. And, right. and there you go. There's your omelet. Ooh, we you can put it. that right back on. Perfect. I, I could have never done it without you guys. That yeah. was unbelievable. That was great. And that was Absolutely. fast. So good Appreciate work. You. Thanks a lot. Good work. <laughs> if you or someone you know might be a good fit for the programs at Lorain County JVS, visit them online and you can browse a full list of programs, find upcoming enrollment events, and even submit your application. Behind the scenes of digital media arts, kickstart a career in TV or film. Up next. Hello, I am James Clark. I am a digital media arts student here at Lorain County JVS. Today, I'm here to give you guys a tip to give better photos and to take better videos. On your phone camera, you guys have a uh, grid that will help you line up the photos, really make better videos where you have point of interest. If you line up your subjects on these four inner point lines, it'll center your image and it'll draw your attention to that direct spot that you want to, making that your center point of interest. And that is my tip on how to make better photos and take better videos. Greg, I thought I was at the Lorain County JVS. But I feel like I'm back at work in the, in the TV studio. <laughs> right? Yeah. So what happens in this class? So this is the Digital Media Arts Lab. In this class, we focus on photography, video, um, some animation, some graphic design projects, but all types of different media arts. Um, try to expose the students to different uh, ways that they could get us a, a foot into the industry. Um, so in here, we have a photo studio, we have green screens, we have different photo backdrop drops, we got strobe lights. So we work on all types so of projects. So this is a studio. Yep. But now we have students. You guys want to see students? This is going to be great. 
Here they are, quietly at work. Look at this. Is it always this quiet in here, Greg? Uh, yes, it's always this quiet. They're always diligently at work, as you can see. What are they working on? So right now, um, we've been working on uh, getting into digital cinema. So they worked on a film-based uh, project where they did an interrogation scene. So we talked about how, you know, it's very common in action movies or cop movies to have an interrogation scene. So each of the students, they broke into groups, they worked up a script, they came up with storyboards, and then they started rehearsing it, and then they acted out the parts, they filmed it, and now each of them are taking all the footage that they shot and they're doing their own edit on there so that they can each put their creative spin on the editing part of it. Each person gets the same scene though? They, well, so we get a different take so on it? So we had four groups of four, so um, there's gonna be four separate themes, but then out of those, there'll be four different edits, so 16 original edits at the end, or 17 original edits, so. You know, as the motion picture industry moves closer and closer to Cleveland, Lorain County, and this part of Ohio, this is probably going to be very valuable for these young people. Yeah, so, um, you know, all the instructors here, the lab instructors at JVS have uh, what's called an advisory committee where we get people from the industry to advise us on things um, that we need to teach. So, um, some of my uh, advisory committee members are from the Greater Cleveland Film Commission, so they have said, you know, we can get as soon as they turn 18, they could take uh, classes, they could work with us, they could become production assistants on a set, and we get them rolling right away. So they, you know, they're looking to develop a workforce. I'm looking to develop, you know, these guys. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a perfect match. So to be interested in this, do you have to have some kind of skill before you start, or you get, you're interested in this, and then you develop that skill and start from the beginning? I mean, like an artist, an artist can draw a little bit. Right. This. There's art involved in this, but it's a little different. There is, um, you know, th they come to it from different places. Some some students are very into the editing part of it, and they they might not be able to draw a stick figure. Other students can draw beautiful pictures like we have up there on the board, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe they don't want to really get into the technical part, but there's, there's places for everybody. We even have a sound studio down the hall where um, some students are doing their own song creations, creating beats, things like that. So kind of covers all the areas. So this Lorraine County GVS element here is really more than just this one class because you got the sound down, down the hall, you probably have some other kind of art and you got this, and then it becomes like a community uh, coming together like a right. motion picture. So if I understand this right, that any student from any one of the schools here in Lorraine County can opt to come here to this school. Yep. So if they're in love with this kind of idea, they think they want to dabble in it, they have an opportunity to come here. Correct, yeah, we have 13 associate schools that uh, feed into uh, JVS, so it's a great opportunity if that if their local school doesn't yep. have this kind of program, and they get they get to be in here for a half a day, right. so it's a long format class, you know, so they really get to deep dive into the subject. Okay, Greg, when does your first student get a, uh, an Emmy or an Oscar or a Golden Globe? Um, well, we're hoping it's coming soon, uh, <laughs> maybe when these guys graduate. I'll give him the first round of applause. Yep. Thank you very much. Something for everyone. See what Lorraine County JVS offers to adult students after this short break. Sponsors of New Day Cleveland include Hi, my name is Zach Smith. I'm a student at the Lorraine County JVS, and my tip of the trade today is furnace filter changes. It's important to change your furnace filter because it keeps clean air in your home, and also that's the air that you breathe in, which is gonna be better for you if it's clean. It's also good to change your filter about every 30 to 60 days because when they get clogged up or dirty, it's way harder on your unit, and it makes your bills go higher because it works them extra hard. The way that you change the filter is you pull it out every 30 to 60 days or so, and sometimes they're hard, but there's uh, arrows on the filter that you wanna be jointed in towards your blower, and you just shove it back in with the new one till it stops, and that's all you gotta do. That's my tip of the trade.
Okay, Mr. Terry, I'm all buttoned up here, and uh, you wanted to make sure I was all tight, right? Yep. Ready to go, I got the gloves, the helmet. All right, so the helmet is the most important piece of equipment that we wear next to our fire retardant materials. Do I need these glasses too? Yep, those glasses as well. Okay, I'm so, doubled up. Okay, check this out. Darth Vader, eat your heart out. <laughs> Let's go. All the forms of welding that we do here are arc welding. Ah. So arc welding refers to the older stick welding process. Right. Uh, I try to teach these guys the proper vernacular so that way when they go in for an interview... They're saying the right thing. Yes. So on the front of our machines here, all of our machines are multi-processed. So we can do MIG, TIG, stick, and flux core in, all in one booth. So the students learn how to operate with a multi-processed machine. Is this helmet going to affect my TV hairdo? Nah. Helmet hair don't care. Let's weld. <laughs> so what I have here is our standard quarter inch hot roll coupons. We're gonna set you up, we're gonna make what we call a T-joint, mm -hmm. which is one of the basic fillet welds that the students learn. That's where everybody starts and goes from there. So what's gonna happen here is you're gonna hold that, okay. I'm gonna help you drive. This is how everybody starts. Wow, you did wonderfully holding my hand. <laughs> it's, great. it's all who's in the driver's seat. It's great. Hey, so how many students take the class and how soon do they find work afterwards? So, their junior year, like I said, my program's full for a junior year next year. There's 25 kids and they can come in. And once they start progressing and I see where their skill sets are, a lot of students can tend to naturally pick this up and just take off and get running with it. So we try to help them find something after school. We have a, a career services department here that's a great help with that. So we can get them working, get them out there, get them learning on the job skills. So that way when they come back in during the day, anything that they're struggling with at work, mm -hmm. we can help them find it. So there it is. Lorraine County, JVS Walding. Road to a great future. Absolutely. Hey, thank you, man. Oh, thank you. Appreciate Thanks for coming it. in. Thanks. And that's just a snippet of the programs that Lorain County JVS offers to high school students. But that's not all. There are classes for adults as well. Advance your education with the Adult Career Center at Lorain County JVS. The Adult Career Center is kind of like a school within a school, uh, focusing on students that are at least 18 years old, have their high school diploma, um, that are kind of seeking a, a change in career or something different. And we have students in anywhere from 18 to 50s, you know, so a wide range of students in all different kinds of careers and career changers. I think that we're a little different than um, some other institutions of higher ed. Uh, we're small and when students come here, they're not taking a series of classes. They enroll into a program that's very specific. So, you know, that program of study, such as the class that we're in now, phlebotomy, that's what they're here for. They're not here necessarily to learn about, you know, English or, or geology or something along that line. I mean, they're focusing on what, what they wanted to learn. There's a segment of the population of Lorraine County that just wants that focused career training. All the programs that we do offer that we call career development programs are designed for entry level employment. And so, you know, the goal is that students come through the programs, they earn their credentials, they learn what they need to learn, and they're out working. So that's really the goal. So it's short, too. So, you know, our longest program is a COS program, and that's 1,500 hours of instruction. Usually takes about 18 to 20 months or so for students to get through that program. So even with that one being a long one, it still is relatively short in the grand scheme of things. Nice and light feather movements from temple to temple? On average, we run about 10 programs that we call career development programs. And they range in the healthcare industry, automotive industry, manufacturing industry, the beauty industry, I mean, all those different kinds of areas. There's a few programs that we run during the day. That works for somebody that has maybe kids in school and um, they don't have to necessarily worry about childcare or whatnot during the day. Um, and then we've got on the other side of the spectrum, if somebody does work during the day, we offer the, the multitude of classes run in the evening for students. And so, um, and those classes usually start between five 
and they run till 10. In general, a lot of our uh, career development program students find that skill and they get that credential and they get a job in industry and so that's really what they're here for, right? So usually very, very positive. One of the programs that I love, um, and I think we all love here at the JVS, is the adult the diploma program, or we call the ADP program. Students can actually come here, earn a credential, and earn their high school diploma at the same time, and then they're out at work. So just imagine you're 32 years old and um, have no credential or a any true market marketable skill, no high school diploma, and then all of a sudden you, you have that. Like, what a game changer, right, for somebody. So it's really, that's really exciting to see the transition in students' lives when they go through that program, earn the diploma, and they're working in the field, or they have went on to higher education and that was never really an option for them because they didn't have their high school diploma. Here at the Lorraine County JVS Adult Career Center, you know, students do have that opportunity uh, for a second chance or a fresh start and so they may have been going down a career or just got out of high school and said you know and, and maybe worked around through some different things and just really weren't finding that success or what they really enjoyed. Um, you know just like the high school we are a school of choice. Students choose to come here and um, that's a beautiful thing because you know 90% of the time they really know what they want and can can kind of go after it and so um, I think that with that it's it just you know you take a student that's already got the desire to get here and you can push them to, to this high level. Slide up to the center of the forehead. You've got good teachers in the classrooms they're teaching students the skills that they need and they're going to go out and get jobs so you know I think that's a one of the best reasons to choose us. For a complete list of adult career center programs at Lorraine County JVS, visit them online. We've been exploring life at Lorraine County JVS, but what comes next? We'll show you when we come back. Every day is a new day. Follow New Day Cleveland on Facebook and Instagram. David and I want to thank Dillard's Beachwood for helping us to look our best every day on New Day Cleveland. Did you know the Eastside location is Dillard's Midwest flagship store? They carry hard to find designer brands in fashion, footwear, home goods, and beyond. Not to mention, you can shop with a personal stylist at no cost. If you like our style, check out Dillard's Beachwood. Good morning, Ohio. My name is Heaven Nixon, and I am an aesthetic student at Lorraine County JVS. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to do a patch test. So the reason why a patch test is so important is because when you're like getting a new product and you don't know what it does, you have to test it out on your skin so that way you're not buying something that's gonna be potentially harmful. So what you're going to do is you're gonna extend your arm like this, and rub a little bit of the product on your forearm and just rub it in. Make sure you guys do not rub this off at all and you're gonna leave it on for like 24 hours. Now at the end of the 24 hours, what you're gonna be looking for is, are you irritated? Do you feel any redness? Are you itching? And that's usually your indicator that this is a product that you should not use for your skin. Did you know that NASA has a research center in Cleveland and they offer internships to high schoolers? Thanks to Lorain County JVS, Trinity Blum was an intern there last summer. See what she does behind the scenes at NASA's Glenn Research Center. My name is Trinity Blum. I am a rising senior in the Project Lead the Way Engineering program at Lorain County JVS. My role at NASA is uh, just the high school internship and they don't really have very specific roles. We get to do a little bit of everything which makes it kind of fun. Lorain County JVS has given me lots of insight into engineering and helped me evaluate what kind of engineering field I wanted to go into. 
Because for a while, I was also considering electrical engineering, but after going through everything, I've realized that I wanted something a little bit more broad, which is why I wanted to go with mechanical engineering, because it includes a little bit of everything we learned there. The engineering process takes you through uh, designing and evaluating and researching and prototyping. So I got to do that a few times at JVS. And then when I started working here at NASA, um, my mentor gave me and my co-intern a project to work on. What we chose to do was a lunar work table with power. The reason why they need something like that is because eventually they hope to build a lunar base kind of near the southern pole. And down there, there's not a lot of light. And also, the soil on the moon in general is just awful. It's very dusty. The dust is kind of made of glass particles, so it kind of rips up your lungs and destroys everything it touches. It clings to everything, too. It's very abrasive. A lot of our research went into how can we combat all these? And we got all the way through the process up to the point where we built a prototype. And our prototype included lots of different solutions to different problems. And so the Project Lead the Way Engineering program has more college credits than the other program, and it doesn't prepare you for a job, it prepares you to enter the field of engineering and continue your education in college. A lot of the things I learned in that class I have used um, here at NASA, like the engineering process, and I also I'm able to have more fluent conversations because of what I've learned, because I know a little bit more about engineering now than I used to. For students considering to go to Lorain County JVS, if you want to take the engineering program, it can help you evaluate what kind of engineer you want to be, because it takes you through all the kinds of things that you would learn. After I graduate, I plan on getting my bachelor's in mechanical engineering, and from there, I hope to work here at NASA Glenn. And then if I find something I really like here, after working for a while, I plan on getting a master's in whatever that may be. Lorain County JVS is full of hardworking and enthusiastic students, and after they graduate, they find great jobs. Let's hear from Emily, a recent alumni from Lorain County JVS Precision Machine Technology Program. I've been at Absolute Machine Tools for a little over three years now. I started here when I was a junior in high school and I'm now a full-blown automation engineer. The one thing I love about it is it's really different every day. I am doing new things every day, working on new robots, new projects every day, and that's something I love. Uh, so for example, if a customer wants a robot, my job is to look at that project, the application, figure out what robot is needed, what options are needed, accessories, get the prices together. If the customer then buys the robot, I'm the person who would travel to the customer, install the robot, train the customer, program it, everything like that. Lorain County JVS really prepared me for the field. I learned a lot of stuff at JVS. Of course, I've learned a lot here, but JVS really taught me the basics to be able to fully understand and learn as much as I could here. I actually started at JVS as a freshman where I explored all the labs. Same with sophomore year, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Sophomore year is where I found precision machine technology. I was just instantly blown away. I thought it was so fascinating how a blank piece of metal could be turned into something that we use in our everyday lives. And junior year, I signed up for precision machine technology, and that's where I spent the last two years of my high school. I was working part time, so I would be at the JVS two days a week, and then I would be here three days a week. And then now that I'm in college, it's basically the same. I'm doing two days at the college, three days here. I've definitely learned a lot at the JVS. We have a lot of resources in the lab that I was in. I was able to not only learn machining, but I was able to learn CAD CAM at JVS as well. It's just an overall great environment. One teacher that really made a difference in my time at the JVS was Mr. Green, my precision machine technology instructor. He's taught me so much in my time at the JVS, and even now I still stay in communication with him, and it's just really great to have teacher and faculty who really care about you. For somebody who's interested in joining a trade school, I would definitely say go for it. Going to the Lorain County JVS was definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made. 
I've learned so much at the JVS, not even just about precision machine technology, just about all fields in general. There's so many jobs. You're always going to have a job if you join the trades. Well, that wraps up our tour of Lorain County JVS. And if you missed anything or want more details, Lorain County JVS is happy to help. Just visit them online or go to fox8.com and we'll have all the links you need. So remember, Lorain County JVS has options for high school students and adults. So if this hour made you want to go back to school, well, who could blame you? I'm David Moss, and we'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland. Thank you.